Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Some of you may know that Capture One is rarely on sale, and as far as I know, they've never issued promo codes or discount codes to their affiliates to share with their viewers. Well, I'm happy to say that's changed. Recently, they gave me a promo code to share with all my viewers. This promo code will save you 10% off any version of Capture One that you purchase. The promo code is Morganti10. Um, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to Capture One's website. I'll also have that promo code listed there. If you're not familiar with Capture One, not sure if it's something you use, they do have a fully working free trial. I encourage you to download it first and try it because if you're used to an application such as Lightroom, Capture One could be a little bit intimidating because it is a bit different. It has some different tools. A lot of the tools are the same, but some of the tools are different. And as you could see, by default, the default workspace, it's laid out totally different. Now, the cool thing about Capture One is you have total control over the workspace and you could create your own. As a matter of fact, I've done one or two videos in the past where I've demonstrated how to set up a custom workspace in Capture One. My preferred workspace I actually use, I have the tools, which by default are on the left, over here on the right, and the film strip I have hidden on the left, so it only pops out when I put my cursor over there. So, um, again, you have full control. On the left-hand side, you could see there's a number of different tabs that contain all those tools. Not only could you rearrange those, you could create your own tab, that's what I did, and inside of my tab that I created, I have all the tools I most often use in the order I most often use them. So it's really powerful in that regard. Now, like Lightroom and those other apps, I keep saying Lightroom because that's number one, really the number one selling and used application is Lightroom compared to Luminar AI, On One Photo Raw 2021, Exposure X6, uh, Photo Lab 4, I could go on and on. Lightroom is kind of the king still. Um, but with that said, Capture One is similar to all those apps in that it's a non-destructive raw editor. Now, when I say that, I mean it never writes to a raw file. It keeps all its edits in a catalog type system. Um, now, when I say raw, it also edits JPEGs and TIFFs and other image files as well, non-destructively. So it's, it's similar to all those apps. It'll work on any image non-destructively. Now, I mentioned a catalog. Like Lightroom, you import images into a catalog in Capture One, but there is another option. It's called Sessions. Some people prefer to use Sessions, particularly people that are like travel photographers or professionals that do weddings or portraits or something like that. For example, a wedding photographer, let's say they just photographed the Miller wedding. They would open up a new session. They'll call it the Miller wedding and all those images go into that session and then their workflow is kind of streamlined to just concentrate on those images that are in that session. Then let's say a couple weeks later, maybe it's not even a wedding or anything. Maybe they just went to Yellowstone National Park. They could open those images up into their own session and then just concentrate on those images. And of course, the workflow is then streamlined just for those images. So sessions are available as well. Um, I prefer to use the catalog system because that's similar to Lightroom. And I'm just used to using uh, these applications in that fashion. Now, um, overall, I thought what I'd do is I'd just show you a quick edit because it's impossible in a video to go through all the different tools. There are, are a lot of them. You can see they're over here on the left. Probably uh, the tabs you use the most are the three in the middle. This first tab has to do with color. The tab next to it has to do with tone. And the tab next to it has to do with sharpening and noise reduction. And these contain, these three tabs contain the tools that you'll most often use. Now there's other tabs as well. There's like a camera tab. You can see there's some settings there. Um, you could tether uh, with Capture One and you'd use that in the camera or you'd uh, work with tethering through the camera tab. It has a file tab or a folder tab. This is your actual library with your images. And you go through and it has presets and styles, they call things, uh, information about the image itself and so on. But 
as I mentioned, you probably spend most of your time, if you don't set up a default or your own, I'm sorry, you don't set up your own workspace, you'll spend most of your time in the three tabs in the middle. And I'm going to start there in tone. And what I like to do is I look at an image and I see what does it need most. Well, this image was shot with the Nikon Z7 II. And you can see there's a lot of dynamic range in the scene. So I exposed for the sky. I really didn't want to blow out those white clouds. So it's a bit underexposed everywhere else. So what I want to do is just open up the shadows right away. So I'll jump down here to the section they call high, dyna high dynamic range. And I'll open up shadows. And you can see it did a great job just opening shadows up. Then I'll bring in the highlights a little bit. Try to bring a little more detail into these cloud areas up in here. Now it has a white and black slider. Um, tell you the truth, with Capture One, I don't often move those. I prefer to use levels down here. And I mentioned it has some tools that you may not be familiar with. Levels may be one of them, but if you work with Photoshop, you probably know levels really well. Now what I want to do is I want to uh, turn on clipping indicators. They call it exposure warnings. They're right here. I'll click right there. Now they're on. Now if I blow out highlights, red will show up on the screen. If I crush the shadows, blue will show up on the screen. And what I'm going to do is go to the levels and go to this little tab or this little control lower right and move it to left. And you can see when I do that, I'm making the whites whiter. And if I go too far, pretty soon you'll start seeing red come in. That means I'm starting to blow out those highlights. So I'm going to back it off. And I'm going to back it off quite a bit. I don't need it real bright. I don't want it super bright. I don't care for the water being super bright. So I'm just going to back it off just a little bit. And on the far left is are the shadows or blacks. And I'll move that to left. And you can see as I start to move that, blue is starting to show up. So I'm starting to crush those shadows. And I'm going to back that off quite a bit. Like that. I'm going to turn the exposure warnings off. Now, if you want to see a before after, you could hit the Y key on your keyboard. You hit the Y key, there's before and there's after. So you could see that really just moving two sliders and then two other controls really did a lot for the image. Now, what I'll do is I'll probably uh, come back to structure and clarity. I don't like to do that right here. I might get a little bit of saturation in there. But then I'm going to jump over to color. And what I want to do is I want to warm it up just a little bit. So I'm going to go to white balance and I'm going to move the Kelvin slider, Kelvin slider to the right. Just a little bit though. And then I'll go to the blues and I want to make the blue sky a little darker. Not that much, just a little bit. Like that. It's pretty saturated. I'm not going to adjust saturation. I'm going to go to yellow and try to get this grass to pop a little more. So I'm going to make that a little brighter. And you can see it's affecting the grass. Maybe add a little saturation. I could go to the green as well and see if I could do something there. A little bit like that. That isn't bad. All right, so, so far, so good. Let's do a before after again. I'll hit that Y key again. There's Y. Oops. And there's, yeah, so pretty good. Um, so I think I'm done there. I'm going to jump back over to the tone tab and I'm going to go to the clarity and structure area and I'll turn some clarity up. Maybe add just a little bit of structure. You can see just the little adjustments uh, mean a lot. Uh, so they're very powerful. Now I'll go to the uh, sharpening and noise reduction tab and you can see by default uh, Capture One adds a bit of sharpening and adds some noise reduction. Now this was shot at ISO 64. So there really isn't any noise uh, to speak of at all. So I'm not really worried about that. And if you look at, for instance, the uh, lighthouse, you could see it's very sharp. You could read 1833. That was actually the year it was built, uh, not the address. So uh, this is, as uh, far as I remember, this is the oldest standing structure in Buffalo, New York. So anyway, a little history about Buffalo. So I think that looks pretty good right there. We're just going to go back over to the tone tab. We'll go to vignetting and we're just going to add a very slight dark vignette to kind of push everyone's gaze more towards the middle. And I'd say I'm done. There's before and there's after. And you could see that you could do edits very quickly in Capture One. Now, if I had more time and the video warranted it, I probably, it has layers. I'd probably do something with layers and probably do something with the water down here. It's just, I don't like it. 
uh, the highlights are a little bit harsh. So I'd probably do something there. I'm not going to really go into it in this video right now, but I wanted to give you an idea and a taste of Capture One. Again, in the description below this video, I'll have links to their website. Download the fully working free trial. Try it out for yourself. If you decide to purchase it, use my discount code Morganti10 and save 10%. Also, they have different versions. It's the same software. It does the exact same thing, but you could save some money. If you're a Fuji shooter, you could just download the Fuji version. It will work only on Fuji files. If you are a Sony shooter, download the Sony version. If you're a Nikon shooter, just download the Nikon version. You could save a considerable amount of money. You could buy the software outright, or you could do like the subscription plan like Adobe has, where you just pay monthly uh, for the software. Um, so, you know, any way you cut it, you could get the software. Now, if you're a Fuji shooter, you should seriously consider using Capture One. Many Fuji shooters think it's a superior editor to anything else. And a lot of Lightroom users dumped Lightroom when they switched to Fuji because Lightroom, in their opinion, wasn't editing Fuji files adequately. And Capture One does a great job on all files, including Fuji files. So, you know, it's up to you. It's really subjective. Check it out. See if it edits your Fuji files better than whatever, whatever editor you're currently using does and make the decision to purchase it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.